with the Aaron Rodgers situation, I mean, he called out the franchise. He's tried to humiliate the franchise. He's not going to show up to one of his camps, even though they may have young receivers they just drafted. He's not going to show up. He'll do talk shows, game shows. And I think to myself, boy, I almost wonder if Green Bay would be better with an owner who could get on the phone and bark at him a little bit and say, hey, pal, you know, but they don't have that in Green Bay. Um, The other day, Mark Murphy said he doesn't have a three-year contract. He's got three one-year contracts. And I thought, (laughs) I don't know if he's going to be there for three years. I mean, where is your line in the sand on not having leverage with a star, being publicly humiliated by a star, um, having um, him not being accommodating? I mean, some of this stuff I look at and think, man, I know he's talented, Bill, but this is a lot. I mean, you go out and take shots at the organization. You can do it with no owner, but it's a lot to deal with. I I know like Debo, he's talented, but how would you have handled this? Well, Mark is a, Mark Murphy is a, is a, not only a very smart guy, but a former player. And so he understands the chemistry of the locker room. He understands what the, what the trigger man does for you. He understands the, 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 the dynamic that that guy brings to the team. And, you know, there, you, you stretch that rubber band as far as you can stretch it in order to win. Now, in Aaron's case, what's, what's, what was shocking to me was he had to know that Devontae was leaving. He did. He had to know it. And yet he still took the money, knowing that he was going to be bereft of his number one receiver. So that tells you, common sense tells you it had to be about the money. That's what it was about. Not get me a team, not let me put, put my stamp on the offense, not let me bring Tommy Clements is as good as, as good as Tommy is. Uh, but let me get my contract done here. So there's nothing wrong with that. Every player should do that, but to do it in a, in a, disruptive way is really stretching that rubber band and now not showing up at minicamp after you've gotten all this money and the off season program, after you've gotten all this money, that one, uh, you know, even Mark probably has a, has difficulty with that as mature as he is and as experienced as he is, as one of the people I respect most in this business, it's got to stick in his craw and it would in mine. I mean, owner or no owner, I think I'd sit down and say, listen, we need to get some things straight here. You know, it's interesting. Uh, the, the consensus among many in the media was you got to pay Debo Samuel. And I said a week ago, Oh, time out, time out. He plays very physically. He's been hurt multiple times. Um, Shanahan, Kyle leans into that style of coaching. Uh, he loves Kittle. Debo Samuel, I said, I couldn't pay him huge money because then my top two players, Kittle and Debo, are injury prone. Where my primary rival in the division, the Rams, Jalen Ramsey's not injury prone, Aaron Donald's not, Matt Stafford's not, Bobby Wagner's not, Cooper Cup's not. I, I got to consider my division. I got to win my division, right? right? And the Rams stars are never hurt. Well, Garoppolo's hurt a lot. <laughs> Kittle, Debo Samuel. So my takeaway was, I get the Niners saying, we're going to listen to offers. Um, Is it ever difficult, Bill? You love a player. He just won your playoff game. He has incredible value. And you're going to get heat by a lot of people for not doing it. What do you do with a Debo Samuel? Man, oh, man. That that is the ultimate dilemma for a GM. It's the ultimate dilemma. Yes. Because you love the player. The, the chances are you love him as a person too. The, the contribution he makes is unique. The, the attachment he has to the franchise and to the fans is also strong and unique. And his personality and style of play, along with the tight end, really says a lot about what that football team is. Yes. The backs are interchangeable. I mean, you right. can, they, they can bring backs off the street, literally, and play well in that system. 
but you got to have that 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 great receiver and you got to have the great tight end so how do you how do you make that fit what do you sacrifice so when it when it when it all boils down and we've had this discussion about what his value is then you say okay we know what his value is it, it it's what Devontae and, and Tyreek got that's what he's going to be asking for what do we have to sacrifice in order to accommodate that? That's where the dilemma comes in. And, and so you have to have a system of football on defense because the offense is where the, where the money is. You just pointed it out. You have to have a system of football on defense where you can feed young players, less expensive players, into the equation. And the Rams are doing that. They let Reader go, right? Yep. He's playing for in the same building, but for a different team. Right. Uh, because they are not going to pay linebackers because they got to pay Cooper Cup at some point in time. Right. So the question is not do we keep Debo or do we put him out on the market? I don't think he's fungible. The question is what do we have to give up to accommodate what we're going to pay, pay him? And that's the dilemma. That's the one that keeps you up at night. <laughs> you know, it's um, quarterback. Me, yeah, yeah. yeah. Four o'clock in the morning, both upright in the bed. Holy mackerel. Oh, <laughs> <gotta do> <laughs> 